Cancer is not just one, but a group of illnesses. The one thing that all these illnesses have in common is abnormal cell growth. So we all start off life as a single cell and groups of cells come together to form organs. These different types of cells all have roles in order to make the organ work efficiently. Sometimes cells within organs die off or wear out. This is a normal process and new cells replace them. Cancer occurs when for one reason or another, the cells do not start to replace them in a normal way, so they grow abnormally. When groups of these cancer cells continue to grow, they form a mass called a tumour. A tumour can cause damage in two ways. It can press down and cause damage on the organs and surrounding tissues, or it can spread to other parts of the body and cause damage in that way. Tumours can be benign or malignant. Benign means that they are not cancer. So benign tumours can cause problems where they occur, but it is unlikely that they'll spread to other parts of the body. Malignant tumours, on the other hand, do mean cancer. So malignant tumours can not only cause damage where they occur, but also in the surrounding organs and tissue and spread to other parts of the body as well. Malignant tumours can spread in three different ways. First of all, by direct extension, so growing into surrounding tissue and organs. Secondly, through the blood. And thirdly, through your lymphatic system. People often get confused between primary and secondary cancer. Primary cancer is where the cancer has started, but secondary cancer is where it has spread to. So if we take an example of a woman who has breast cancer, the breast cancer is her primary cancer, and if that disease spreads to her lungs, well then that will be her secondary cancer. Doctors and nurses often refer to this as metastases, or that the disease has metastasized. We don't know why some people develop cancer and others do not. It is likely that it is due to a lifetime exposure to carcinogenics. Carcinogenics are cancer-causing factors. So there are simple steps that we can all take to reduce our risk of developing cancer. First of all, don't smoke, and if you do smoke, plan to quit. Second of all, limit the amount of alcohol that you take in. Stick to the guidelines on how much you consume a week and try to have several alcohol-free days throughout the week. Thirdly, look at your diet. You should be eating plenty of fruits and vegetables and foods that are high in fibre. Try to limit the amount of sugar and fat that you take in. Fourth of all, try to take regular exercise. Finally, if you do notice a change in your body, go to your GP. Remember that a symptom is a sign that there's something wrong, so it's important not to ignore it. If you want to learn more about how to reduce your risk of cancer, go to the Reduce Your Risk section on our website or call us on the National Cancer Helpline and speak to a cancer specialist nurse.